Hi Year 8, welcome back to our periodic table topic. Today in lesson 2 we're going to be looking at patterns in the periodic table, building on our understanding of the structure of the periodic table from lesson 1 and looking at how patterns are made in the periodic table based on the chemical and physical properties of the elements. Your starter task today is the challenge of this fun brain game to test your knowledge of the periodic table from last lesson. Click on the link in the lesson PowerPoint and then have a go at the game. Our learning objectives in today's lesson are to build on last lesson and looking at the principles and the structure of Mendeleev's periodic table. We're going to use that knowledge to look at how the modern periodic table is organised into groups. We'll learn the names and the properties of several of those groups, where they're located on the periodic table, and we'll bring all that together on our worksheet so that we have a fully coloured and organised version of the periodic table to refer back to. So this is our periodic table from last lesson. So you can see here our periodic table from last lesson, the RSC interactive one. And while this is really great for exploring and finding out more about the individual elements, when we're looking at patterns in the table, it's convenient to have one that has the names written on as well. So for today, we're going to use this periodic table. Now, this periodic table is the one used in the GCSE examinations by Pearson Ed Excel. We're going to use this because it has quite clearly for each element listed, both the symbol and the name for each element. It also, referring back to our earlier topic, has the atomic number. Remember, that's the number of protons in the nucleus and the relative atomic mass for each element, which is the average mass of, an, of that element. So the first group we're going to look at in this lesson are group one, the alkali metals, and we're going to study them in much greater detail in a future lesson as well. The position of the group one metals is found on the left side of the periodic table, a vertical group, one column, and it's group number one in the periodic table. Um, you'll be familiar with the names of some of these metals from our first lesson in the topic. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. All of these elements have one electron in their outer shell, which explains why they have similar chemical properties and undergo the same type of reactions with other substances. They're very soft metals. They can, in fact, be cut with a knife, which we'll see an example of in the next lesson. They have low melting points and low density. Some of them can even float on water. And they react with water to give hydrogen gas and also produce an alkaline solution. Another important group to know of in the periodic table are group seven. And group seven are known as the halogens. The halogens are found towards the right side of the periodic table, the second column from the right. They consist of some elements that we're likely to have heard of, and I know some of you answered in lesson one as elements you'd heard of, such as fluorine and chlorine, bromine, iodine and astatine. Those are in group seven, and they are also very reactive elements. This is because they've got seven electrons in their outer shell. They are non-metals, and they are typically tox toxic with coloured vapours. They also exist as diatomic molecules. Um, for example, chlorine forms a diatomic molecule, diatomic meaning two atoms, so two chlorine atoms joined together in one molecule. The next group we're going to look at are group zero, the noble gases. They're found at the right-hand side of the periodic table and range from helium down through to radon on the right-hand side. Again, some of these gases you may have heard of, such as helium and neon in particular. They are very, very unreactive gases, and this is because they have a very stable electron structure, thinking back to our atomic structure topic. They have full outer shells and therefore do not undergo chemical reactions readily. They're also non-metals like the halogens, and they're colourless gases. The final section of the periodic table that we're going to learn about today are the transition metals, also known as the D-block elements, which we'll learn about later in chemistry. They consist of this section in the middle of the periodic table that falls between groups one and two and three here. We'll look at those just now in our task. Now your task today in this lesson are to follow the instructions on the worksheet to create your own colourful and informative periodic table for you to keep and use for the rest of the topic. So here we have today's worksheet which has a blank copy of the periodic table for you to complete your work on. 
The first part of the task is to add the names to the boxes for each of the groups of elements we've learned about in today's lesson. You have group 1, give the name of that group, 7 and 0, and the transition metals are given. You then need to choose a colour for each of these four groups of elements and highlight each of the boxes in the colour that you've chosen. You then need to colour in and shade in the corresponding group on the periodic table above. When you've done that, you should then look and identify the metals and the non-metals on the group. You can use the periodic tables that have been linked in the class PowerPoint in order to help you identify these areas. Draw the thick staircase dividing line on your periodic table and label each side of that line. The final thing to do is to fill in the blue boxes on the vertical columns and horizontal rows to label the groups and the periods. So in this box here, write in correctly which one are the groups and which are the periods. We have the horizontal and the vertical. So now that you've completed the task, let's have a look and compare this to your finished periodic tables. As you can see in the diagram here, I've chosen yellow for group one and written in the name the alkali metals and they're found in the first vertical column on the left of the periodic table. I then chose this purple colour for the group 7 and they're called the halogens and again I highlighted those group 7 in the periodic table. I also chose green for group 0, the noble gases, which I highlighted on the right hand side vertical column of my periodic table. And then finally for the transition metals I chose blue and shaded in this section of the table. You should have similar with your colours but it will show you very clearly where these important groups are found in the periodic table. You were then asked to label the metals and the non-metals. Now when you look at the periodic table and compared it to the interactive periodic table that we've been using, you'll have found that the metals lie to the left hand side of the periodic table. Most elements fall into that category of metals and only those that fall to the right hand side of that line are the non-metals. So we have this zigzag staircase line that comes down. Now if you've been looking at some alternative periodic tables you will find that some of the elements either side of this line are often referred to as metalloids. Metalloids are elements, elements which can exhibit properties both of metals or non-metals depending on the situation and we'll learn more about those in later years in chemistry. And the final part of the task today was to add in the labels group and period. It is really, really important that we remember that periods are across the periodic table and groups are vertically up and down the periodic table. To finish off today's lesson, I've put a link in here to the periodic table of videos from the University of Nottingham. Let me just show you that. The periodic table of videos is an amazing resource that's been put together where each element has its own video for you to explore and watch. Now, I know you're not going to be able to watch over 100 of these today, but I would recommend thinking about which elements you've been interested in and having a click on those. For example, if I were to click on magnesium here, I would find a video on magnesium um, going through some of its reactions and what we can expect to see for its chemical and physical properties. For those of you looking for some extra challenge from today's lesson, you should try this periodic table quiz. This bite-sized quiz will take you through some of your knowledge from last year, some from the first topic this year, and some from our current topic, looking at elements, compounds, and the periodic table, and your understanding of the concepts from that whole area. So, to summarise what we've learned today in Lesson 2 of Topic 4 of the Periodic Table, we have looked at the principles behind Mendeleev's periodic table and understood how elements are organised in groups and periods. We've then looked specifically at names and some properties of different groups within the periodic table, learned how to locate them, label them and find them in a periodic table, which will allow us in future lessons where we're going to look at several of the main groups in more detail and understand their chemical reactions and physical properties.